Okay, section 5-7, the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem and its converse to solve problems and also use the Pythagorean inequalities to classify triangles. So a review of what the Pythagorean theorem is, if you have a right triangle, then the side lengths of the triangle can be set up such that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, okay? And some people get all confused about which one's A and which one's B, and it doesn't really matter. If you want to, instead, you can think of the Pythagorean theorem as leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And sometimes that helps people not to get all worried about which leg goes first and which leg goes second, because it doesn't really matter, okay? A Pythagorean triple is a set of three non-zero whole numbers a, B, and C, such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So here are some common Pythagorean triples. 3, 4, and 5. Because 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, right? 9 plus 16 equals 25. Here's another set. 5, 12, and 13. Because 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Another set, 8, 15, and 17. 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared. And one more, 7, 24, and 25. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. So those are some common Pythagorean triples that you might run across. Um, so the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, so here's the Pythagorean theorem up here. The converse of it is just like what you would expect from a converse. It's taking the Pythagorean theorem and flipping it around. So if in a triangle, if the side lengths A, B, and C satisfy A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then the triangle is a right triangle with C being the hypotenuse. So if A squared plus B squared equals C squared, then triangle X, Y, Z is right and the C or the XZ is the hypotenuse. And remember the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Okay, so there, there are a couple of inequality theorems that we could take from the Pythagorean theorem. And the first one uh, has this picture. And what we can say is that if C squared is greater than a squared plus b squared. So you'll notice what happened is when it's equal to, if you think about a right triangle, it looks like this, right? When it's equal to, then um, this is what happens. Now what happens when c squared gets bigger? Notice I get an acute, uh, obtuse triangle. When c squared gets smaller, I get an, an acute triangle. So in this case, if c squared gets bigger than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. Okay, now in this one, if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is acute. Okay? All right, so th those are the inequalities. So we'll do a few examples of this in just a few minutes. So uh, to sum up, uh, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. If we're told that if we've just given a triangle and we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then the triangle is right. If a squared, or sorry, if c squared is bigger than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. And if it's less than, then it's acute. So I want to show you a really cool proof of the Pythagorean theorem. And here's my picture here. You'll notice that I have four triangles on the outside of a big square, and then I have a little square kind of sideways inside. So if I found the area of the outer square, so you will agree that this is a plus b, right? So the area of a square is is the side a plus b all quantity squared. 
Okay. Now, what are these four little right triangles in there? Well, there are four of them, and it's one-half base times height, so one-half base times height, okay, plus the area of the inner square, which is c squared. So now if I simplify this a little bit, I'm going to foil this out. I'm going to get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared equals, and you'll notice that this cancels here and becomes a, I'm sorry, this is should be base times height, true, but it's actually a times b because my base and my height are a and b. Sorry about that. Okay, so now this cancels to a 2, so you'll notice this becomes 2ab plus c squared. So if I subtract 2ab, subtract 2ab from both sides, I get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Ta-da! Proof of the Pythagorean theorem. This is one really great um, geometric proof. There are lots of them, but this is a very famous one. Okay, so let's do a few examples. Do these side lengths form a triangle, first of all, and if so, classify them as right, obtuse, or acute. So, is 8, 11, and 13 a triangle? Let's find out. Remember, to find out if it's a triangle, we subtract two of them. So I'm going to subtract these two. 11 minus 8 is less than 13, is less than 11 plus 8. So this would be 3 is less than 13 is less than 19. Yes, it's a triangle. Now we need to decide what kind of triangle it is. If it was a right triangle, the hypotenuse would be the biggest number. So that number is what I want my C to be. Okay, so 13 squared is what compared to 8 squared plus 11 squared? Okay? So this is going to get me 169. How does that compare to 64 plus 121? And uh, this is going to be 185. So 169 is less than 185. Oops, 5. Okay. So that means that we have an acute triangle because c squared was smaller so this is going to end up being less than so this is acute okay all right let's do another one find out if it's a triangle first of all so uh, 18 minus 11 is less than 34 is less than 18 plus 11 so this is going to be 7 is less than 34 is less than 29. Uh-oh. This is not true. That means we have not a triangle. Which means I don't, I can stop right here. I don't have to figure out what kind of triangle it is because it's not even a triangle at all. So I stop right there and I'm done with that problem. Okay, so let's do number three here. We're going to first find out if it's a triangle. So 12 minus 7 is less than 16 is less than 12 plus 7. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 5, less than 16, less than 19. So yes, it's a triangle. Now we need to figure out what kind of triangle it is. So if it was a right triangle, what would be the hypotenuse? The biggest side, so that will be my C. So 16 squared is, how does that compare to 7 squared plus 12 squared? Okay. So 16 squared is 256. How does that compare with 49 plus 144? So 49 and 144 is 193. And we have 256, which means that the C squared is greater, which means I have an obtuse. Okay, so there you go. Thanks for watching.